Every day I'm hustling, 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 hustling. Welcome to the Tour Trap with Adam Connolly and myself, Von Hart. We bring you destination experience operators from all over the world to chat about their experiences, find out what makes them and their businesses tick. So Scott, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. No worries. Can you just uh, just kind of tell us all about your pizza experiences and your pizza tours in, in New York? Sure. Yeah. I've been running pizza tours in New York since 2008. And we take people to significant pizzerias to help explain the science and history and culture of pizza, not just in New York, but really globally using New York City as like a, a little landscape for us to play around in. So every tour includes pizza. You get to go into the kitchens. You learn about the ovens, talk to pizza makers, uh, talk all about uh, tomato selection, cheese preparation, dough fermentation. It's pretty detailed and in-depth. And the idea is that you walk away loving pizza even more than you already did when you started the tour. That sounds really cool. So when you first said the science of pizza making, I was kind of thinking, how what what could you possibly be talking about? And then you talked about but we mentioned dough fermentation and, and things like that and, and the tomato sauce. And so I guess it's all kind of linked into that. Is that how kind of science do you go? Is it like a, a proper pizza nerd experience or can kind of the normal person, uh, you know, kind of understand what's going on as well? Yeah, we um, are, you know, our team is all pretty deep into pizza and can get super nerdy, but we try to keep it at around 75% nerdiness because we want people to understand what we're talking about. So if we take out, a TDS meter or an infrared thermometer. We want people to understand why the dissolved solid content of water is or is not significant for pizza dough. Uh, we want them to understand how temperature and air movement is or is not significant for the bake. And we want them to understand pH, so the balance of alkaline and acidity, how that's going to change your flavor profile and uh, may maybe might shift your topping combinations. And it, it really is scientific if you let it be what's kind of like the standard experience that you take customers on uh, on your pizza tour so the main thing that we do are walking tours so we'll take people to three different pizzerias each one will represent a different moment in pizza's evolution and then we do a bus tour which is four pizzerias and we're not confined by walking area so we jump on a big yellow school bus that we have here in the states and that's big yellow school bus Will take us to the four destinations that I've chosen in advance. And um, the idea is it's constantly changing, always rotating. If there's a new interesting place to visit, we might factor that in. Or if there's an old place that has invited us to to check them out on a Sunday, we'll go and we'll go and visit them. Uh, how much pizza do people get when they when they come on the tours? You do a slice per stop, and our standard walking tours are three stops, and the bus tours are four stops. But we also have private tour options that can be unlimited stops and unlimited pizza. Unlimited pizza stops sounds right up my street. I like the sound of that. <laughs> how did people find you? How do you how how could they get in and book on the tour? The easiest way is to go to scottspizzatours.com or to follow us on Instagram, which is Scott's Pizza Tours, and on Twitter, Scott's Pizza Tour, and on Facebook, we're New York Pizza Tours. So really easy to find online because we're um Oh, we only do pizza tours. It's the only thing we do. We've spoken to two uh, Chicago pizza guys um, in the last two weeks, actually. And obviously, Chicago, they reckon, is the pizza city. But I reckon you might have a slightly different opinion. Um, I, You know what? I, I think that the value of a pizza city is its number of high-quality pizzerias and its diversity of style. So Chicago does have a good diversity of style and high quality. New York is just a different set of styles and uh, different different options. We have more pizzerias here, but we also have more bad pizzerias here. Um, but with that, you also get a lot of great ones. So, you know, food is subjective. You can't tell somebody that the thing that they like is not good. Uh, and, and also it's territorial. So you can't tell them that their city is not as good as your city. So when we get people on tours, they're coming from all over the place. And when they say, oh, I'm from Nantucket or uh, I'm from Memphis, we can't say, oh, well, good thing you're here because back home you got garbage. No, it's more like <laughs> we want to teach you how to better enjoy pizza because we think it's getting better all over the world right now. We think pizza is getting better right now. I think 50 years from now, probably less than that, 
New York will not be as elevated a pizza city because other places will have realized that it's not about the water in New York and it's not about any magic. It's about knowing what you're doing. And Chicago absolutely has that. Cool, cool. So you're not going to be drawn on whether New York's better than Chicago for a for pizza? I personally like New York. If I was going to be stuck in one of those cities, I would pick New York. And the reason is because I think it has greater diversity of styles. And within each of those styles, I to me, there are versions of that that I, I like more than what's in Chicago. However, one of the best Neapolitan pizzas I've ever had in my life was at Spacanopoli in Chicago. I think Coal Fire is an excellent pizzeria, two locations in Chicago. I mean, and there's some great tavern style thin crust, like at Vito and Nick's. But New York is more my scene because New York has a grab and go slice culture. Chicago doesn't have a slice culture. It's, it's slice pizzerias are newer. In New York, it's more of a built in thing. So it's just, you know, it's just more of the style that I like. Yeah. Okay. That's um, that's really interesting, actually, about the culture of uh, having a kind of slice, grab and go pizzeria versus a more of a sit down restaurant culture. That's interesting. Yeah. It doesn't. You got to remember that the reason that New York is known for pizza by the slice, paper plate, big cheesy greasy slice, is a reason, and that's because we're a pedestrian city. You're walking everywhere, so it makes sense to have a restaurant that has no seating, like a pizza shop, where you walk up to a window, grab a slice, and then you're on your way. That's a cultural thing. It became a culinary thing. Chicago doesn't have that because it's not a city of foot traffic. Everyone I know who lives there has a car. I know one person, maybe two people here who have cars. So how long have you been operating? I've been operating for since April 27th, 2012. So as of the day that we're sitting here recording, this has been over 12 years. When you first started, what were your big challenges? What what kind of uh, did you have to go out and fight for a customer base, or did did you kind of have a group that wanted to come with you? How, what what kickstarted uh, you know your your business? There's always the struggle for finding people who would respond to the product. I had no background in tourism; had never even been on a tour, really, like very few tours ever. It just seemed like a medium that I could use for giving information about pizza. But there's still the struggle of How do you make partnerships with restaurants? How do you get customers? How do you deal with the whole back-end, legal, ticket sales, OTAs, the whole mishmash? I was focused on the pizza. I didn't want to have to deal with all the other stuff. So it's that other stuff that is what makes our our jobs harder. Uh, It's not very hard to talk about something you love. Did you kind of have to learn that back-end stuff as you you go along? You didn't, did you try and get all that stuff uh, ready before you first operated, or were you just kind of thinking, let's get people out eating pizza and they'll worry about all that stuff afterwards? Yeah, I was, I, I think it's what they say about most early, you know, beginning companies is your ignorance in the beginning is helpful because it's, it's like helpful naivete. I didn't know about those things, so I learned them on the job. And if I tried to set them all up in advance, they would have been obsolete by the time I opened. So you know, when I started, there was no Groupon. I, I don't think Viator was something that was even on my radar. You know, I probably bought a ticket for something via, I don't know, a kayak or Orbitz or something, but I never knew how that functioned. So I learned all that stuff later. I didn't know what an OTA was for the first five years that I ran this. Wow. And I bet they were the best first, best five years. Of- <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, it was bliss. <laughs> Are you registered with OTAs now? Are you selling through Viator and, and other platforms? Yeah, we sell through Viator, TripAdvisor Experiences, Course Horse, Vimbly, Get Your Guide. Well, wow, that's quite a, a quite a range of OTAs there. Have you also got quite a lot of direct customers as well, or is it mainly through through the OTAs? Where, where's we're we're ninety percent direct, ten percent OTA, and I want to keep it that way. We pretty actively try to do that. If it gets to be more than ten percent from the OTAs, then you're really in trouble. Then you rely on them, then they change their model, and then you're in trouble. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's really smart. And one of the things that impressed me when I was checking out your website earlier today was um you've got some great content on there, so videos and you know, other other kind of resources. And um I imagine the video content that you've got is quite a powerful marketing tool in its own right. Absolutely. It's remember that the whole basis of this company is really, really loving the subject matter. 
So it's not hard to do those videos. It's kind of hard to produce them because I'd shoot and edit a lot of them myself. But once that stuff is out there, it's there for people who have taken the tour. It's there for people who haven't. It's a great way for people to find the tour is that, oh, I watched all your YouTube videos and I wanted to take a tour from you because obviously you're the person I want to listen to about this. So it's all all really exciting. And I think it's important to uh, remember that the content is not your product. You know, it's, it's the, how you distribute the content. And so talking about pizza on a YouTube video is not giving away something for free. It's really, it's sharing your love and somebody who really would want to will sign up for the tour. A YouTube video is not going to tell somebody that they don't need to take the tour. So the last, the last eight months for you, um, uh, ha- have you increased your, your virtual offering a lot? Because I see you've got quite a good range of online stuff on your website that you offer. Is that, is that, really increased over the last few months or has that always yeah. been in place? We, it was never in place before this because we were so busy doing physical in-person tours, but we snapped into it probably early April and started offering four products online. One of them is a virtual pizza tour that we run once a week. Another is a history class that changes every week. So we talk about a different type of, a different angle on pizza history. And then we do two pizza making classes. There's a dough making class and then there's a pizza making class. So tonight's dough making class will be 90 minutes long. We'll tell you the ingredients that you need and it's only five ingredients and you probably already have at least three of them in your house. And um, that's it. We, we take you through the process of making pizza dough. And then the next day, you'll be able to make awesome pizza at home. What platform are you using to host the, uh, your online classes? All the classes are hosted on Zoom. Zoom. And we're doing most of them directly, selling them ourselves. But then there are a couple of websites out there that are reselling them, some of those OTAs. And then we started doing a TripAdvisor experience of once a week, we do a dough making class for their audience. Right, okay. And so you're not operating any physical tours at the moment in in NYC? We are, but it's very rare. And it's only private groups, eight person maximum, masks required, six feet from the tour guide. And it's 100% outside. Scott, I'm not sure if you know much about us as an association. Um, I don't know if you've looked into kind of what we've, what we've set ourselves up to do or anything like that. Yeah, I've, I've heard, I heard your business partner on the Tourpreneur podcast and oh, okay, I checked, yeah. out, checked you out online a little bit. So yeah. Okay. I guess one of the questions for, for us to you guys is what do you think we can do to support you um, what, what is it you may need from us as an association over the next kind of 12, uh, 18 months? And I guess it's difficult to know exactly because of we're not sure on the situation, but just kind of generally. Yeah. So I guess maybe think back to your first few years starting out, what would have really helped you in that scenario from an association? That's what we're I think, I think exactly the very things that helped me when I started would be great now. It's just the sharing of information and the understanding of this community as being a community of uh, colleagues not necessarily competitors, because the people who helped me get started 12 years ago are all people who are basically in the same business and fighting over the same customers. But we help each other out because I'd rather that everyone I know does things in a proper way and, uh, you know, not let people slip into the, there are plenty of ways to do this that are not great. So I think sharing information is great, uh, encouraging community, all those things, which I, I know are part of what you want to do. Scott, thank you so much for um, uh, joining me. That's really cool. Um, love the sound of your tours. Love this. Love what you've done in terms of pivoting and doing something different and, you know, uh, securing the, the future of your business. That sounds really good. And uh, wish you all the very best for the future. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure. And, and good luck with the project. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Totally. Cheers. Take care.